When you think of the Chesapeake Bay, you probably think of things like rockfish, oysters, and blue crabs. While those are iconic Chesapeake critters, the watershed spans over 64,000 square miles and is home to over 3,600 species of plants and animals. From the headwater streams in New York to the open ocean in Virginia, the Chesapeake Bay watershed provides habitat that attracts migrations from as far as the Arctic Circle and gives life to some of nature's most unique creatures. I'm Lauren Ferreri and I am the Biological and Visitor Center Manager here at Middle Creek Wildlife Management Area. We're most well known for our waterfowl migration that happens in February and March, specifically the snow goose migration and the migration of our tundra swans. Middle Creek's this awesome hot spot for all of this uh, hubbub of waterfowl migration, mostly because we have a 400 acre lake here uh, and the grounds to help support um, the feeding of those species and local agricultural areas as well. But at any given time, you can see upwards of over 100,000 snow geese here thousands of tundra swans in addition to the Canada geese and all the waterfowl and ducks that we have here. One of the cool things that we get to do here at Middle Creek is that we get to study the populations of waterfowl that come through here and are breeding here throughout the year. So actually go out and we will capture ducks through a process called waterfowl banding. And the importance of that is that the bands that we're putting on these ducks can be found by hunters or other biologists in other parts of the state and in the, uh, the Atlantic Flyway. And all of that information goes back to the federal US Fish and Wildlife Service, which is in charge of overseeing those populations and making sure they're healthy. A lot of our waterfowl we have here, you know, they're, they're transient. They're only going to be in certain places for so long. Uh, specifically with our snow geese that we see here, they're going to be overwintering in those coastal Carolina areas, the Chesapeake Bay region, so south of us. Uh, they usually hit our National Wildlife Refuge System, Bombay Hook, Prime Hook, and Delaware before they come to Middle Creek. Then they use Middle Creek um, for a short period of time, two months out of the year, uh, and it's part of just a small portion of time where they spend uh, their life cycle at, but then uh, after here, they're gonna be going to the Finger Lakes and eventually to the highest provinces of Canada to breed. Um, their total migration is roughly 3,000 acres, but they can fly thousands of miles. So some of the conservation issues that waterfowl face are similar to a lot of other species. Obviously, habitat loss is always a problem for a lot of our wildlife. Uh, specifically on these flyways, a lot of our waterfowl really rely on that heavy agricultural influence throughout the Atlantic Flyway and a lot of those farms are being developed um, for housing complexes or shopping complexes, whatever the case might be. So losing those agricultural areas is uh, definitely a, a detriment to waterfowl. One of the things that we do here at the Alliance, our forest team implements conservation practices that protect local waterways. Um, we really strive for clean local waters and we know that the work that we're doing upstream here is benefiting the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so one of the practices that we use quite extensively are forested riparian buffers and this is where we are planting trees and shrubs adjacent to waterways in order to protect those waterways and also to provide wildlife with habitats. Buffers that we're planting are creating a ton of really good habitat for a number of waterfowl species. I think it's important to, to realize that, you know, when you come to a place like Middle Creek, you might not always realize the ties that it has to you and, and why it matters or why you should care about it. Waterfowl and all the other species that we have here at Middle Creek, you can see over 280 species here in a given year. It really ties to our intrinsic values or how we uh, relate to nature. These birds are just a bigger part of the entire ecosystem that humans really do rely on and, and it's a, a beautiful sight to see them when you do have whether it's 100,000 snow geese or you know 12 different species of ducks in their natural environment, um, it's not something that you can see everywhere.
Thanks for watching our video. If you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website to learn how you can be part of restoring your local river or stream to the Chesapeake Bay.